donner maintenant la parole à vos examinateurs okay. et je vais commencer par, okay. euh, par vos encadrants plutôt et euh, je vais commencer par euh, notre collègue M. Safir Faisal. M. Safir, si vous m'entendez. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Merci beaucoup. Euh, je vous remercie tout, euh, le, tous les membres de la comité euh, pour euh, participer à cette défense, bien soutenance euh, de Miss Larbi Khadija, my student. I have to switch to English. Unfortunately, I'm not that good in French, but I can speak. But that's not the point, speaking or not. The point is to pass the information right away. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my student, uh, Khadija, Ms. Khadija, my colleague, uh, Dr. Professor uh, Suleiman, and, uh, and everybody. But uh, let me first uh, very shortly, very briefly, explain the background of this work. Um, this work actually was incepted uh, after uh, we started, uh, we kick off a collaboration between me and uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Professor Suleiman, after my visit to University of Tlemcen in January 2018. Uh, that's when I met him and uh, we liked each other. We, we were impressed about uh, our enthusiasm to the research. And uh, I convinced uh, my colleague to move a little bit from microsystems to IoT uh, realm, or basically IoT uh, world, if you want to name it that way. And uh, he was enthusiastic and he's still enthusiastic. And uh, we were lucky to have a good student like Khadija to carry out uh, the, uh, our endeavor to introduce uh, the Internet of Things to the biomedical engineering department where my colleague and she uh, were and are part of it. Okay. So uh, Khadija, Ms. Khadija actually was, uh, she jumped on the idea and uh, the idea of also using English as a language of research. And uh, I'm sure by now, both of these two uh, factors, uh, getting into the IoT business or world, as well as uh, using English in her research, which she found actually very beneficial and she can explain that uh, herself as well, because the research worldwide is mainly written, discussed, analyzed in the English language with all due respect to the all languages, but the fact is the fact. Okay, having said that, so uh, let me first and foremost explain or help Ms. Khadija to help her actually, and also clarify the subject to you guys, that uh, the main contribution she was trying or we were trying to bring to the table is that to estimate the blood glucose concentration without puncturing without puncturing. Basically, I'm also diabetic like uh, Dr. Walid Jikun, my colleague here in CDTR. By the way, I came from Canada just uh, about uh, three years ago, actually, and we started the collaboration before I came to, from Canada to, uh, to Algeria and, my, uh, and to join my colleague and friend, Dr. Jikun, and to this uh, research center, uh, Center for the Development of Advanced Technologies. And we are contributing thanks to Khadija, uh, to the advanced technologies, but in the biomedical engineering. I'm showing you here the, these two most important, and of course, there's one last one. These are the main components we use, me and Jakun and all the diabetic people, to estimate the, uh, the blood concentration. So first and foremost is this. We puncture ourselves in the fingers, we get some blood, we use this. What's that, Walid? Tell me, Dr. Walid. I have the same. I know, I know. I just want to make it clear for them and make it graphic. Another market. <laughs> I know, I know. It doesn't matter. But the problem is this, is that we need to puncture and get the blood and then put the strips, the strip here. Uh, let me show you here. And then put the, the blood that come up from the, from the finger and then measure imagine we do that many times that's a very uh, very bad because it's first it's a pain and also we have to carry all these things we have to carry this and this and also the strips this so everywhere to just measure the blood and then once we get the blood 
Then we use to puncture ourselves to inject insulin. So you can see this is a practically very bad in many senses, carrying these things and feeling the pain of the blood and you name it. And that's not convenient. So now when I introduce the topic of uh, using uh, IOT in the business of uh, you know blood sugar to uh, or diabetic people to my colleague Dr. Sufyan, we he really liked it and we really liked it. Why? Because I was at the time also using a CGM continuous blood glucose uh, measurement uh, system, which basically it's a needle that it's always picked in the body and uh, it measures all the time and through Bluetooth communication it sends it to. To either a, a portable device or to my uh, cell phone to give me an idea about how much uh, is the blood glucose and then i need to puncture myself which makes it a bit better but every seven days as uh, our student mentioned seven days and the next version now uh, uh, has actually after every 10 days so they are developing technologies uh, after that we have to change the needle that we picked we installed in our body and then put a new one and then continue now, the idea of the contribution, which is a major contribution of uh, Ms. Khadija here, and uh, actually uh, the publication of journal paper of impact factor of seven plus, shows it very clear that it's really uh, likable and uh, very demanded. Why? Because now we are estimating the blood sugar just by touching our skin with a sensor, a CGM sensor, and then using a neural network uh to uh to uh to estimate the blood glucose so we don't need any more what you call it. we don't need any more this and this we don't need all this so these they can go and then only the bracelet and the phone is 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 needed to estimate the blood glucose and then maybe we can add the, the pump and then that's it so it will be now we have a virtual uh intelligent pancreas in business so we save a lot in terms of cost with uh, we save in terms of convenience no pain of blood and uh, the life the quality life of the patient the diabetic me and dr jacoon and the people who are like us we will be happier in that case so this is not perfect solution but yet it's the first step in the long run okay that's why uh, mr uh, miss khadija she endeavored into a startup or label, which is the something that will help her to in, engage in establishing a company or startup company to develop this technology further. So it's not the end of the story, but it's a good start. And the aim is minimize the cost, minimize the pain, make the quality of life of diabetic people much easier. It becomes much, much needed, especially for elderly and the young people. The young like kids, now we have diabetic kids, unfortunately, in these strange times. And also we have the elderly who needs assistance. But doing that, doing, uh, I mean, going with this solution will minimize the pain to support them. We cannot have uh, a nurse every time with the kids or every time with the old people. We want to make it the life of these vulnerable people much easier. Okay. So that's the whole, uh, I mean, the whole point of suggesting this technology. Okay, having said that, a couple of observations to you, Ms. Khadija. So don't uh, don't think that I will not criticize you, but I will criticize you now because uh, critics are helpful to make the work better. Okay. Uh, okay, can I ask now? 